welcome back to the Entertainment Vortex. We were at Brendan Theaters today watching Aquaman. Now, if you've watched any of our reviews in the past, you probably know that I am a diehard DC fan. I'm also a diehard Zack Snyder fan, but I guess we won't talk about that too much. I loved all the DC movies up to this point in the modern DC universe. So I definitely liked all the modern movies at different varying degrees. They're not perfect. I was really worried going into this movie because I knew that they were going to course correct. They course corrected a little bit with Wonder Woman, but not super course correcting. And I knew that this movie was going to be the point where if they were going to take a sharp left turn, this was going to be it. Now, I have to say, I'm a little mixed on this movie. I enjoyed it. It was fun. There are definite strong points to it, but at the same time, the darkness is gone. This is very much not Zack Snyder's DC Universe. And I know a lot of a lot of people watching this right now are probably applauding and cheering, and that's what they wanted. But I didn't want another Marvel, and I can't help but feel that this is moving in that direction. For better or worse, I guess that's what we're going to have to do, is I guess DC is going to have to become more Marvel. So let's talk about the cons first, and then we'll go into the pros, because there are a lot of pros. The biggest con, in my opinion, is this movie movie in certain points was cheesy and cliche. This was pretty much beat for beat without question the hero's journey. They had every box on the list checked 100% exactly the way you would expect it to be. There is a character to fill every role that you would expect. There is a twist for every moment you would expect. And there's not a whole lot in this movie that's going to make you go, oh wow, I didn't see that coming. As a matter of fact, if you're anything like me, majority of it you're going to figure out at the beginning of the movie and just wait for it to happen. Now, with that being said, knowing what was going to happen, and pretty much every major, actually every major twist in the movie I knew was going to happen. Even with that being the, the case, I still enjoyed the movie because of a few pieces. One, Jason Momoa. I'm pretty sure that man could touch anything and it would be golden. That, that guy is just charismatic. Uh, there's something about what he brings to a role that makes it special. This is no exception. He was fantastic in this movie. He breathed life into a character that was going to be very hard to do convincingly because traditionally Aquaman is considered to be a pretty boring character. And in the scheme of the Justice League, definitely isn't the one everybody's jumping up and down to hear about. With that being said, Jason Momoa knocked it out of the park. His portrayal of Aquaman is fantastic. It's strong, powerful, it demands a presence. It stands toe to toe with the rest of the Justice League. And I think that that's very, very important. Plus, I'm pretty sure just sitting in the audience audience, his uh, machismo rubs off on everybody and you get a couple more chest hairs just by being there. Here's the thing. There is two pieces to this stuff. Well, three pieces technically. There's him, there's the person that's going to be across from him, and then there's the villain. Amber Heard plays Mira. Mira is the person that's across from him the whole movie. Kind of the yin to his yang. And I have to say, I didn't buy her at all. I felt that she was a little one-dimensional. I felt that her acting was a little dry. I didn't think there was a depth. And putting someone like that next to Jason Momoa doesn't work. You need someone that's equally as charismatic and I don't think she pulled it off. By no means does she ruin the movie. She still, you know, does her lines, she still does her character, she pulls she pulls her weight to a point, but I don't think she had the wow factor that Momoa did in that role. And that does bring the movie down a little bit for me. When it comes to Patrick Wilson, who plays King Orem, I thought he did fantastic. I, I really liked seeing him in it's weird seeing him in a role other than Night Owl because I'm such a, a Watchmen fan. And he did an amazing job in that part. Seeing him as a superhero is kind of odd, but I think he did a great job. He had a distinct look. He, he felt like he could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Momoa and still be flawed at the same time. I liked what they did with his character. I liked his arc. I liked where it ended. I liked where it began. It was, it was well done. So you've got that trinity. You've got the hero, the villain, and then the one in between. Two out of three points was strong. That's good. The mentor, Willem Dafoe. He did a good job. He wasn't absolutely amazing, but he did a good job in the part. I liked it. Dolph Lundgren plays uh, one of the other kings. I liked him as well. I, when I first saw him, I'm like, wait, really? Um, that's kind of a weird choice. But the further it went along, the more I understood his character being kind of the military king, and he fit that role really well. Um, so I enjoyed that. So let's talk about what everybody's curious about, special effects. So obviously you have a movie that's underwater. You've seen the trailer. Everything looks crazy. How did they pull this off for an almost two and a half hour movie? Uh, the answer is perfectly. Uh, the special effects in this movie are mind-blowing. I would think that's the strongest point of this movie. It looks gorgeous. They do amazing world building. I want to see more of Atlantis. I want to see more of these armies, of these people, of these creatures. I want to see more of this. And a lot of that had to do with the special effects team and how they pulled off the huge battles and the crazy machines and the vehicles and buildings and just, just awesome. Absolutely awesome. Um, another piece of this that I thought was very impressive was the sound design. You have these larger-than-life things happening 
happening and every boom and every collision really shook the theater and that is super important. I highly suggest if you're interested in this movie seeing it in theater because you are going to gain that much more from seeing it. It is a larger than life movie. In closing, it is Cliché, it is predictable, but it is a spectacle to behold. This is a larger than life story, and even though you're probably gonna guess a lot of what's gonna happen, you're still gonna enjoy the ride because of the characters, because of the world building, and ultimately because the whole picture is just pretty fun. So I'm gonna give this movie an 8.5 out of 10. Definitely an enjoyable movie, not in my top three DC movies, but being a Zack Snyder fan, I'm sure that doesn't surprise anybody. But I do want to see it again. I'm glad I saw it, and I will definitely own it when it comes to 4K. This is something that if you are at all a DC fan or enjoyed the lightheartedness of Wonder Woman and want to see more of that, this is your movie. Go see it. I think you'll enjoy it. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. We give you multiple videos every single week. And we have t-shirts available if you're interested in those as well. Those are available down in the description below. We hope you'll follow us into the Vortex. We'll see you next time.